Section 2 1. In the bitter cold of winter, the trees stand bare of leaves, and it seems as if their life too had departed for ever. Yet in the springtime they put forth new leaves and beautiful flowers, and the fruit begins to show itself. So it was with me in my crucifixion and resurrection, and so it is with my faithful cross-bearers. 2 Corinthians 4, 8-11, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 to 10. Though they seem to be crushed and dead beneath their cross, they still put forth the beautiful flowers and glorious fruits of eternal life which abide forever. 2. In grafting a sweet tree onto a bitter one, both feel the knife, and both are called upon to suffer in order that the bitter may bear sweet fruit. So too, in order to introduce good into man's evil nature, it was necessary that first of all I myself, and afterwards believers also, should suffer the agonies of the cross, that they might in future forever bear good fruit, and thus the glorious love of God be made manifest. 3. If in this world men persecute and slander you, do not let this surprise or distress you, for this is for you no place of rest, but a battlefield. Woe to you when men of the world praise you, Luke 6, 26, for this proves that you have taken on their perverse ways and habits. It is against their very nature and temper to praise my children, for light and darkness cannot exist together. If, for the sake of appearances, evil men act contrary to their nature and cease to persecute you, yours is the greater injury, for their influence enters into your spiritual life and your spiritual progress is hindered. Further, to put your trust in the world or in worldly men is to build your house upon the sand, for today they will raise you aloft and tomorrow will so cast you down that there will be no trace left of you, for they are in all things unstable. When I went up to Jerusalem at the Passover, they all with one voice began to cry out, Hosanna! Hosanna! Matthew 21, 9, and only three days after, when they saw that what I said was against their life of sin and self-seeking, they at once changed over and began to cry, Crucify him! Crucify him! Luke 23, 21. 4. If through some misunderstanding some or even all believers turn against you and cause you pain, you must not count it a misfortune. For if in all honesty and faithfulness, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you continue to do your duty, remember that God himself and all the hosts of heaven are on your side. Do not allow yourself to be discouraged, for the time is at hand when all your good designs and purposes and all your unselfish love will be made known to the whole world, and in the presence of all, honor will be done to you for your labors and faithful service. I, too, for the salvation of men, had to renounce all things, and was myself renounced by all, yet at the last I regained all and everything." Neither be surprised if the world desert you, for it has deserted God himself, so that in this you are seen to be a true son of your father. 5. Do not suppose that those who live in luxury and seem to be always successful in worldly affairs are all true worshippers of God, for the opposite is often the case. It is possible for sheep to wander away from the fold and the shepherd and find in the jungle good pasturage, but they are all the time in danger of being torn to pieces by wild beasts, which will indeed be their fate in the end. But those who abide in the fold with the shepherd, though they may appear to be sick and feeble, are certainly free from danger and in the shepherd's care. This is the difference between believers and unbelievers. 6. The life of the believer and that of the unbeliever show great similarity in their beginning, but when their end comes, they are as diverse as the snake and the silkworm. The snake, however many times he casts his skin, remains a snake and nothing else. But the silkworm, 
when it casts off its unsightly cocoon, becomes a new creature, and as a dainty pretty moth flies about in the air, so the believer, casting aside this body, enters into a state of spiritual glory and flies about forever in heaven, while the sinner after death is but a sinner still. Though the silkworm, cramped within the cocoon, is in a state of depression and struggle as though upon a cross, yet this very condition of strife and difficulty gives strength to its wings and fits it for the life that is to be. So, my children, while in the body, are in a state of spiritual struggle and conflict, and look forward to their release with sighs and longing, but through the bearing of the cross I give them strength, and they become fully prepared and fitted for that state of endless life. Romans 8, 23. In the midst of this spiritual warfare, and even while they are bearing their cross, I give them a truly wonderful peace of heart, that their courage may not fail. For instance, when a faithful martyr of mine had borne witness to me in word and deed, his enemies took him and hung him up to a tree, head downwards. In this condition, such was his peace of mind that he was utterly unconscious of the pain and disgrace to which he was subjected, and turning to his persecutors said, The way you have treated me does not distress or dismay me, for I can expect nothing else in a world where everything is upside down and where one can see nothing upright. In accordance with your own nature, you have turned me, as you think, upside down, but in reality, I am right side up. Just as when a slide is put into a magic lantern wrong way up, it shows the picture correctly, so, though now, in the eyes of the world I am upside down, I am forever right side up before God and the heavenly world, and I praise him for this glorious cross. 7. For believers, it would sometimes be an easy thing to become a martyr to my name, but I also need living witnesses who will daily offer themselves as living sacrifices for the salvation of others. 1 Corinthians 15, 13. For death is easy, but it is hard to live, for a believer's life is a daily dying. But those who are thus ready to lay down their lives for my sake shall share my glory and live with me forever in fullness of joy. 8. Should pain and suffering, sorrow and grief rise up like clouds and overshadow for a time the Son of Righteousness and hide him from your view, do not be dismayed, for in the end this cloud of woe will descend in showers of blessing on your head, and the Son of Righteousness rise upon you to set no more forever. John 16, 20-22